Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of HR Mentorship Learning Series. Today, we'll be talking about a very exciting, if you will, topic called Exit Management, What You Must Know. Exit Management, What You Must Know. You know, like in life, there is a time to be born and a time to die, okay? I write this, there's always an end to an employee-employer relationship. Don't worry, I'm not going to tell you about all that today. We have someone in the house, someone I've had the privilege of knowing for about 10 years, if not more. Adelia Musu, I've also had the very singular privilege and honor of working with him in the same organization. So this is someone I can vouch for. This is someone I've seen in action, literally. Adelia Musu has been in the HR industry for 12 years now and his experience cuts across industries like oil and gas, technology. He has even worked in the civil service, okay, and also in the logistics space. He's currently the vice president of human resources in his organization, and his core competencies are around employee engagement, compensation and benefits, and organizational development. In his spare time, he enjoys football and comparing events. Hopefully, his compare aspect will shine through as he makes his presentation today. It's my pleasure and privilege to hand over control to Adele Amosu. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Ogbe. Thank you very much, uh, Olio Adiosho, for that um, introduction. Uh, once again, my name is Derele Amosu. I'm the Vice President of People at uh, Metro Africa Express, also known as MAX. And as we've said, uh, today's topic would be exit management, what you must know. Uh, just like um, Oliemi said at the beginning, you know, everything has a beginning and has an end. Uh, from the moment you step into an organization, right, uh, you have eight clocks, uh, might take as many as 30 years, especially for those in the civil service. Uh, some people five years, some people 10 years. And uh, for the new generation type workers, uh, two months, three months, four months, depending on what the case may be. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, everybody has a time when they need to, you know, submit their documents to say, uh, I've done my bit here and I need to go. However, um, during that exit uh, process, right, when you want to leave, there are certain things that happen. It's not just a, I drop my resignation letter and I walk through the door, right? Both the employer and the employee are obligated, right, to carry out certain type functions. So uh, we're going to deep dive into, you know, what exit management is, you know, the types of exits, um, what it is to create an, an exit checklist, the obligations of an employer, the obligation of an employee, and then other considerations um, outside exit management. Um, I like my topics or my learning series to be a lot interactive, right? So please, uh, I'll ask questions in between and I need uh, feedback uh, from each and every one of us uh, as the case may be. Um, so let's deep dive into it. What exactly is exit management? So um, by the definition on my screen, it says, it refers to the end-to-end -end process and procedure of managing an employee or employees leaving an organization so this is not just limited to one employee but so many employees because you have um, instances uh, where there are mass exits from an organization now this process starts from either a voluntary or involuntary resignation right and what is voluntary what is involuntary resignation or termination or exit so voluntary termination occurs when an employee makes the decision to leave a job or end a contract early, while involuntary exit is usually an elusive decision of an employer to initiate the exit of an employee. Right. So it's two ways. You could have um, an employee say, I, "I'm not. I'm no longer interested." Right, and they leave. 
that's voluntary. You also have another form of involuntary that is also triggered by the employee, right? Like I said, deep dive into most of these things, right? Um, types of exits. So this is what I want us to do. If you have a pen, if you have a, if you have a uh, paper beside you, right? I will tell you the different types of exits we have, and I want us to categorize them into the voluntary and the involuntary. Uh, in some of the definitions I've given, right, uh, it almost it tells you which it is. So let's start with the first one, which is the constructive discharge. A constructive discharge, also known as constructive termination or constructive dismissal, occurs when an employee quits under duress. The key word here is duress. He didn't want to leave, but he wants to leave and believes that they are no choice but to leave their employer. If the employer's actions are illegal and unlawful, the employee may have a viable claim for wrongful dismissal. So in such a scenario, you have an employee who is probably being frustrated on the job, right? Um, the employee is not enjoying uh, their line manager, the, the colleagues around them, the types of workload they have, it's beginning to frustrate them, right? And they decide they want to check out. Now, that is constructive discharge. But where it becomes a case where there's, um, for instance, harassment in the workplace, right? And it's because of that harassment, the employee is leaving. That is where the last line says, the employee may have a viable claim for wrongful dismissal. So the, the person has gone to report, there's nobody treating it, the person leaves, or uh, the person reports a very senior um, um, executive at the place of work, and because they don't want to investigate it, they terminate the employee. So that's the place, the scenarios where that employee can sue for wrongful dismissal. Then um, call termination. Oh, you're fired. You can get out of my office. And that is where an employer severs the ties with a worker due to poor performance or violations of, of company policy. Um, by and large, that is mostly the areas where you can either fire someone. Um, consistent poor performance. So you've gone through uh, different appraisal circles and there's no show of improvement. You cut ties with those persons, provided you are documenting that this person has significantly shown poor performance. Also, violation of company policies. So we all have different policies around um, harassment, theft, um, bullying, uh, different workplace policies, right? And each of these things have, you know, um, punishment under your sanction grid or what the outcomes are on the sanction grid. So some of them, uh, you just need to violate one of the policies and you're out of the, and you're out of the door. For some, you need to have gone through it maybe two, three times before you are fired. Now, in the case of um, what you call at will employment, an employee can be fired without a reason or warning. Uh, let me just take um, a breather here to explain what um, employee at will is. Now, employee at will doesn't occur in all countries or all of, in all um, um, places, right? For instance, in the UK, uh, there's nothing like an employee uh, employment at will. I think in India too, there's no employment at will. In the USA, there is an employment at will right um the labor law is at will here in nigeria but then uh with the new with the new um cases we've had at um the courts uh where um you know companies are uh, past employees are suing their companies right uh the legal standing now is uh, nigeria really doesn't um, um, operate at the employment at will which means you can't terminate um anybody without genuine reason that's why before you terminate employees, right, always have documented evidences leading up to that termination, right? So where it gets into uh, a legal battle between your company and that existing employee, you have uh, substantial documentation, right, as the representative of the company to say, oh, there has been consistency with this person's performance or this person's behavior. And because of that, we have had to terminate the employee. 
moving on, we have um, layoffs. Um, layoffs uh, refers to the separation in which the employer has let an employee go because their services are no longer needed, right? Uh, most layoffs um, occur due to change in technology, um, change in uh, job styles. Um, maybe there's a change in the policy and how the uh, organization is expected to operate. And because of that, a lot of those rules are re rendered redundant. So you don't see a need for such rules anymore. Or there's a new technology that, now that the technology has come into play, you don't need so much manpower, right, for those tasks to be done. So at that point, you render those people um, uh, redundant, and then we lay them off. So I'm moving on to the next slide. Please, if I'm moving too fast, uh, Oluyemi, please call me back. Uh, if you want me to move faster, please also just let me know. Also, uh, more types of exit termination for cause. Now, this is when an employee is terminated for cause. They are fired from their job for a specific reason. Reasons can include any sort of misconduct, such as ethics violation, for um, following of rules. So termination of course, of course, similar. Now, some of these things are maybe the types of wordings that are used in individual company policies or how the labor law of uh, different countries interpret it. Uh, termination by mutual ag agreement. Um, I'll use an example to give to explain this better, but let me give you the definition. A uh, situation where both the employer and employee consent to a separation. So usually, um, most of the cases I've had around mutual termination by mutual agreement, uh, I've expressed about four uh, at the course of my career, and is usually with um, high level type um, employees. So you have maybe people in your um, senior management issues, right? Where uh they have kpis that are not met but instead of saying oh we'll fire this person you call themselves so you call them into the meeting to say hey um you've not shown you've not met most of the agreements we've had the milestones have not been met however we want to give you we want to give you uh opportunity to you know resign honorably Right, and both of them come to terms of okay, how should how should this be done? What is the communication we are going to put out to say, oh, uh, Mr. X Y Z is no longer with us, and this was terminated by mutual agreement. So both parties need to agree on the terms and conditions of that exit. Okay. Next, we have the termination with prejudice. Uh, with prejudice in the case that an employee has been fired due to inadequate performance, poor skill, and ethical or legal transgressions, still same under firing and termination of clause. Now, termination without prejudice, which is the flip of termination with prejudice, right, um, means an employee has been let go for reasons other than performance, behavior, or attitude on the job, as in a layoff. Uh, employees terminated without prejudice are eligible to be rehired to, into the same or similar role. Um, so in this scenario, right, um, let's assume there is a case of a redundancy and you need to let people go. You don't put an ex, uh, you don't put, uh, the person did not, is not terminated because uh, there were poor performances or uh, there were breaches of um, contracts, breaches of policies, right? There was a change in technology, for instance, and um, you had to let most people go, right? If there's a need, maybe more technology coming on, you guys are spreading, right? And you need those people back, you can easily rehire them. Uh, there was a place I worked in at some point where uh, there was a change in the technology. A lot of people were let go. And um, it also happened to be close around the time when COVID happened. And um, when people came back from COVID and they saw that regardless of the technology that was put in place, they still needed people to drive, you know, the technology pushing out their products. A lot of these people were rehired. Right. So with emission without prejudice, right, the chances are uh, it's almost close to a follow because we follows to you know, call people back. Um, when people are let go, 
you just put uh, to do to change in technology. Uh, there can be a sub clause saying in the event where we feel that um, uh, there's another change in technology or policy, you may be rehired. There's usually that clause there. Uh, so we move further to involuntary terminations, uh, which takes place when an employer either fires or lay off an, an employee. That is so involuntary and voluntary. Most of the uh, things I'm giving fall under these two. So let me just move to uh, wrongful termination. So wrongful termination happens when an employee is discharged from employment for illegal reasons or if complete policy um, is violated when the employee is fired. So that is also self-explanatory, right? Um, you go against company policies, you probably steal, uh, you trade secrets, uh, then you can fire that person. So that's wrongful termination. You also have end of contracts. Now, this one happens more with people you call contract staff, uh, where you have a contract of employment saying um, you would work for XYZ company for a period of three months, or a period of six months, or a period of 12 months. So at the end of those periods, if you are not renewing the person's contract, you end the person's contract. Uh, we have some companies who, you know, they renew contracts uh, for a certain period for making the person a full-time employee, right? But then, uh, if the contract is three months, if you're not re if you're not going to renew the person's contract, then you have another letter saying we are ending your contract based on uh, the um, initial uh, lease that was signed with us, and then you let the person go. Uh, then you have resignations, um, um, which is when an employee decides on their own volition, you know, to go. Uh, after submitting, after spending a few years in the organization, you know, he submits an official notice to say, um, my time here is done and I need to leave. There's no fight. And then you have forced resignation, uh, which is similar to uh, the constructive um, uh, dismissal I said the other time, where um, due to certain factors, right, uh, the employee feels overwhelmed and feels they are no longer needed, right? But instead of waiting for them, for the company to terminate them, they will just resign on their own. Oh, we have more, uh, you have retirement, uh, which is um, someone spending, you know, the required number of years in service, and you've gotten to the point where you can no longer function effectively uh, because you've passed the age of service. Right, uh, so you cease to work, uh, cease working once they have met the age and tenure stipulations laid out by the employer or negotiated by the employer and a union. So, uh, in Nigeria, I know it's now 65, uh, for professors, it's now 70. Uh, some other companies have uh, slightly higher or slightly lower um, um, rules. Uh, for civil service, I think it's um, 60. Or, 30, or 35 years in service, whichever comes first. So that's for retirement. Uh, mandatory retirement is similar to retirement, right? But at that point is where the person is now deemed a risk, right? And uh, you see, okay, this person is low, this person is getting close to the retirement age. However, the person's mental capacity, if the person is doing a lot of mental work, is not as sharp as the beginning of their careers. Or if the person does very manual type work, physical work, uh, say like the police or the army, right? Or a bricklayer in a structured construction company, right? That don't have that physical strength anymore to, to carry out their duties. Then they give them, they tell them to re uh, retire mandatory. Uh, for retirement, mandatory retirement, the you know, for full retirement, you get your full benefits and whatnot. For mandatory retirement, the benefits are usually higher because it's close to you. You are close to being forced, right, to retire earlier. So they give you more benefits, you know, calculate how much your salary will have been in those periods where you are working and then they pay you off. Uh, then you have phased retirement. Uh, similar to a mandatory retirement, the difference here is you are giving less time to work, um, you are giving more time off, so it's like winding down. 
this person has five years, two years left in the company. Uh, as against doing 40 hour work weeks, let's reduce it to 30, let's reduce it to 20, um, or let's give the person three days in a week. Uh, at that point, they start sending the person to, to do uh, retirement courses, uh, leadership courses in case they want to start their own businesses and whatnot, right? So that's where phased retirement comes to. And then finally, you have follow. Uh, follow is an employee is still considered employed, right? But if follow is considered a temporary unpaid leave from a job, if the worker is eligible for unemployment benefits, they may be able to collect. So uh, most times uh, for follows, it's almost rendering you redundant. Um, you are not going to work. You are just at home. Uh, but then if business picks up again, they tell you, okay, come back. And um, they could negotiate some payments in between that time for the organizations do, who are not really financially buoyant, right? They may decide if you want to take up employment elsewhere in the in the meantime, you can take up employment uh, in the meantime. And where we need you, we'll definitely call you back. So those are the types of exits that we have. So if you're writing, I would like to go back a bit and let's take them together and which ones were voluntary and which ones are involuntary, if you don't mind. So let's start from the beginning. So under what would you class it? Uh, someone can just unmute their mic, you know, uh, maybe one person will take the first three, another person takes the next three. So um, constructive discharge, is that voluntary or involuntary? Anyone? Hi, any takers? So people don't follow the account. Okay. Okay. Someone was speaking, sorry. Okay. I said involuntary. Good in evening. Involuntary. Sir. Good evening. Great. Uh firing. Involuntary. Okay. Layoff. Involuntary. 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 Great, thank you very much. So another person can the next three. Uh, nation force. Anyone? I didn't get what you said, please. Is for cause, is for cause voluntary or involuntary? Is involuntary. Termination is for voluntary. Termination for cause is involuntary. Is involuntary. Okay. Termination by mutual agreement. Voluntary. Voluntary. Yes, okay. it is constant. Um, with prejudice. Yes. Uh, with, with prejudice. Involuntary. 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 All right. So, pretty you guys understand the hand. Right? So, all right. So, let's move into. Uh, creating an exit checklist. So, um, Mr. Bayo has come and said he's leaving the organization, right? Um, as HR personnel, uh, what are the things they are expected to do uh, before that person leaves? Um, for those of you who use HRIS systems in your organizations, uh, a lot of these things will, for, will be under your offboarding uh, modules. Now, the all body modules, some of them come with pre. Um, you need to unmute, are they really? Hello, are they really? You need to unmute. Hello, are they really? You need to unmute. 
All right, can you hear me now? Yes, we didn't hear you in the last one minute. Oh, it really? Was... I wasn't muted. I guess no, someone muted. You are muted. Yes, it was involuntary. All right. <laughs> I'm just All right, that was an I'm the one sharing the screen. I hope you understand. Oh, okay, great. The network All was right. not uh, cooperating. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, so um, so whether you're using an HRIS or it's uh, manual or it's customized or it's not pre-customized, right? More often than not, the exit checklist is usually the same, right? It's it follows a certain type pattern. So this is just an overview of the type of things you see in an exit checklist. So first thing is talking to the employee, right? Uh, and there are a number of ways an employee can tell you that they are quitting. This isn't limited to voluntary exits, but also involuntary exits. So um, even where you're the one that's telling the employee to go, you need to have like an exit interview. Then you collect the company property that is with them, actually the things that you know would consider as intellectual property to the organization. You need to get it back from them. Uh, if there are exit forms they need to fill, if there are um, um, processes they need to go, uh, because I had this organization where you go from one department to the other to go do clearance, so clearance checklist. Uh, so you clear from finance, you clear from HR, you clear from department. If they have clearance form, they need to fill, they fill that. Um, you also need to let some people know. So maybe the stakeholders around uh, that person's job, especially if the person is uh, holding very sensitive roles and information, right? Uh, for some other people, letting people know is also because if that person was dismissed for theft, for instance, uh, the organizations who put out, you know, public publications to say uh, this person doesn't trade or this person doesn't deal under the umbrella of XYZ company, right? So they put those things out. Uh, removing employee access from your HRIS, if you have biometric logins, you know, you'd activate the person's access. Uh, also on emails, uh, and any other company profiles, you deactivate them. You update your records immediately because one of the things that make HR um, reports very shoddy, right, or not up to date is because we don't update records. You just you feel make you feel like the person has left. I will update it at the end of the month, but then you don't know when some of these reports are needed, right, and just leaving one person's name can alter a lot of things, right? And then you distribute the final paycheck, which we'll get to. So, um, the exit interview number one and distribute final paycheck, we'll deep dive into that uh, in subsequent slides. So, during the exit process, right, the employer is obligated uh, to do certain things. And like I said, the first thing is conducting an exit interview. Now, um, exit interviews basically is a one-on-one -on -one discussion between a representative of the employer. In this case, usually the HR. Uh, I always like to say the person's line manager should also be involved in the exit interview because uh, quite, of the, quite a number of the things this person would be saying will directly involve the department that they are leaving, right? and the exiting employee. Now, it's a post-employment appraisal for both parties. Now, you know what an appraisal is, where you review uh, you review uh, what has been done within a quarter or a half year, depending on what cycle you want to use, right? And um, the employer wants to know how did they do as an employer. The employee too also wants feedback so it's a discussion. And some of the questions that you need to ask as an employer include the following. One, why is that employee leaving? Two, what is the company doing right? Moderately right, poorly, or very poorly? Now that part is very, very key because whatever answer the existing employee gives you right, would, would give you an insight on some of the policies you need as an organization to tweak. Now, I'm using the word tweak and not total change or discard, because sometimes um, existing employees see 
some policies uh, in a myopic view without getting a full understanding. So at this point, you're expected to explain why sort of some of these policies are there. And these are things that you should have even explained, right, during your onboarding process. Because it's poor onboarding processes sometimes that also lead to people wanting to exit early most times. Um, other things we include, um, how could conditions be improved within that organization? What would you do to improve the situation that is causing you to leave? Now, more often than not, when an employee is leaving and he says he's leaving because of X reason, if you decide to conduct a stay interview at the same time, you will find out that there are two or three other employees who share that sentiment. And if nothing is done about it, you also leave those. Um, a stay interview is where you just do like a blood check. So you call maybe your direct reports or those have people say, um, do you enjoy working with us? It's similar to an exit interview, but you're having it while the person has not checked out. And you gather feedback from that interview, right? And you work on it. So that's the state interview. So where you are having this interview with this exit, this exit interview, at the back of your mind, know that some other persons within that organization share this sentiment, right? And this should also trigger a stay interview among your employees. If this person is dropping um, serious allegations, right? Or serious complaints that if you were to put this on a scale, right, you might end up losing quite a number of employees. Now, what, um, what do other employees feel about the situation? So, you see that first one ties into the next one. If you ask this person, how do you feel? And he says it. Your next question is, are there, you don't need to mention names. Do other people feel about, uh, feel the same way you feel, right? And then you explain. Uh, or you tell them, okay, uh, this person feels, uh, feels the same way. This person feels the same way. Then you know you need, something needs to be done. And then the company in general. Then what isn't the company currently doing? that if it is started to do, things will improve. Now, uh, most companies sometimes think they provided everything, right? But then when you have interviews like this, you realize there are certain things you have missed out, right? And when you introduce these things, what happens at the, the, the retention, is your retention levels now go higher? Or, or do people keep exiting from the system? Then you ask, please describe your general feelings about working here, right? If possible, please tell us why you are leaving. Ties to the first question. Uh, what were three things you enjoyed most about working here? So three things that about enjoy about working there, and also three things that should change. So you get the positives, you also get the negatives. Are there ideas that you have that you wish you could have implemented while you were here? Um, sometimes employees have good ideas, but maybe because of the nature of uh, the business itself, the line managers, or is even they have a bureaucratic structure that they feel if they introduce novel ideas, those ideas are not imbibed or are not, are not enshrined, right? Uh, these are the times where you need to ask such things. And as the HR person, yeah, yeah, the, uh, you document a lot of these things. You're a custodian of policies, you're a custodian of change, right? This is from, is from things like this, your change management, you even start kicking in. What are those things that need to be done, right? Uh, what are the, if we decide to do these things, what are the perceived notions of employees uh, with even the companies? Are people going to be happy? Are people going to be sad? Are they going to be um, uh, resistance, right? So you have what you call your uh, push-pull, right? Are people going to be resistance? Are people going to actually uh, support that movement, right? So chain management also, some chain management is also an offshoot of some of the things you do here during an exit interview. Um, please describe the three best things about working with your supervisor. It is always key you get this feedback, 
right? What is the line manager like, right? Because um, we tend in organizations, we tend to listen more to line managers than direct reports. And if you work in an organization where you do 360 feedback, where it's not just uh, manager, um, manager to direct report, you also have direct reports doing to line manager, you also have uh, peer review and all that, then good luck, some of these things will have been addressed. But where you don't have 360 feedback in your appraisal process, this is the best time for you to ask an, an existing employee about the line managers. So you can get a feel on the person's leadership style. Now, what would you change about um, our employee orientation program? So it's also good to ask about, especially if you have an employee who is living within uh, six months of you hiring them. More often than not, if you don't have a good onboarding or orientation program, this person will start checking out from the moment uh, they come in on their first day. So you could also ask at this point, is there something that needs to be done about the orientation, about the onboarding, uh, that needs to be tweaked, that needs to be managed so that uh, other people won't be affected, other people won't leave? Um, which is why I said, in other words, these are things that you wish you had known before or during the beginning part of your employment with the company. Then who are the three people who have made the most impact uh, to the existing employee or their career within the company? Uh, and finally, what advice do you have for the next person in your position? So these are the questions you are supposed to ask. Now, there are some questions that you are also not supposed to ask during an exit interview, right? And I'll read them, I'll quickly read through them. Uh, don't ask targeted questions about specific people or issues. You don't want to, you don't want to create conversations that would end up, you know, uh, getting other people targeted. So while it's okay to ask for general feedback, right? Also don't um, lay your opinions on them. So you're ha having an interview and the person says, oh, my manager, this is, uh is this i say yes I, i've also felt like that about him you it means that you as the hr know these things that you're not you are not affecting the change right now don't feed office gossip it is never constructive and won't be reliable information so even if it's gossip you've heard and the person is giving you that information just just act ignorant oh really we would investigate and we would ensure that that's taken care of simple you don't need to add to it. Don't say anything that could be construed as slander. The conversation should focus on the employee's experience. Although you, may, he or she may have negative things to say about the company or certain people, right? You should just listen without agreeing or disagreeing. Uh, don't lay groundwork that could look like you are setting someone up for termination. Any employee's performance and status within the company should be should not be shared, especially with the departing employees. So don't also say, and I, 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 I'm surprised that the one that is leaving now, I expected this person to be because we don't see what he's doing. No, don't talk about other people during an exit interview. Uh, don't get into personal issues. Always keep it professional, right, and work related. Then don't try to convince the employee to change they are staying with the company. Uh, there's this joke. There's this joke uh, I used to, we used to share while I was a junior employee. Uh, where we say where someone say I'm resigning, and then the line manager will have the line manager or someone else will call the person and um, say, "I oh, know this is what we'll do. This is what we'll do." And then they they withdraw their letters. The joke is to be uh, <laughs> the moment you withdraw a letter, they're already looking for your replacement, right? So or more often than not, if you are not going to Effect a change while employees are still within your employ, right? At the exit stage is the is the worst time to have such um, engagements, right? So don't don't because if even if the person changes their mind, for them to have gotten to the point of resignation, remember they have equally mentally checked out. So they staying back, they will not give you the one hundred and ten percent. Uh, uh, energy they were giving to you before and then both parties will end up being frustrated and then you will now have to let the person go okay now further things on the obligation of the uh, employer 
is payment of terminal benefits. So what are terminal benefits? Uh, so either involuntary or voluntary, exiting employees are entitled to some financial rewards. These rewards are financial accrual of obligations met to trigger a payout. Now, this is a disclaimer, right? The computation of terminal benefits differs across industries and geographical locations. So while some people uh, will just do, they just pay you your, just pay you just whatever you've worked for that period. So other people add other things to make the terminal benefits very juicy. For companies that have, you know, huge pockets, deep pockets, they would add quite a number of things to it to make it look fat. Because you've heard, you've, we've seen a lot of disgruntled employees who collect a terminal check and you see, after I put 10 years into this company, see how they gave me three naira. And you have some people who say, ah, they gave me 50,000 naira. I didn't even spend so long. And it's a thing of joy for them. So what are the things or that um, that form into the terminal benefits, right? You have things like your accrued leave allowance. Uh, you have payments in lieu for involuntary exits. You have the days worked. You have um, things like severance packages. Uh, you have gratuity, uh, which is paid to people uh, for gratuity. You know, so for some companies, is uh, for every year work to get uh, one month's pay. And then it's usually uh, a retention strategy for people who spend a period of years within the company. And then for some companies, they also give you tax refunds. And I will explain the tax refund part of it. Um, so I do comp and BEM. And um, your taxes are paid. Uh, is, is basically is calculated at, at an annual uh, base. So you have your annual salary. So from your annual salary, your um, annual tax is usually paid and then it's broken into 12 for easy remittance. Now, uh, if, a, if an employee doesn't use up to one year, this is less than your 12 months, the person's annual salary for that year is not the same anymore right because so let's for instance i earn my annual salary is 12 naira it means my monthly salary is one naira so if two cobo is supposed to be taken out uh is uh two cobo is supposed to be taken out based on my tw uh, 12 naira it means two cobo times 24 cobo sorry is my annual tax remittance for the year then two cobo is taken out but if I leave in June, my annual salary while I'm in the employee of that company is no longer 12 Naira. It's now 6 Naira. So my tax will be recalculated on 6 Naira. And I can tell you it's no longer, to, it's no longer going to be 24 Kobo. And it's not also going to be 12 Kobo. Right? Because taxes are, are calculated on a gradual process. So it could be less. So if I have paid in six months, I paid 12 Kobo and my, my compensation is recalculated and I'm expected to pay as a June based on my new um, salary, I'm supposed to pay only four Kobo. I paid 12 Kobo. So it means eight Kobo will be given back to me as tax refund and that could form part of my terminal benefits. But then, not all companies do this. Like I said in my uh, notes here, right? It differs across industries and geographical locations. So for some companies, the above sums up what is contained in the exiting employees package. Other companies, it's a combination of a few of these components. So while some might do everything, some will just select a few. Now, this is also dependent on what you have set out in your employee handbook as things that uh, would be termed as terminal benefits or what will form the calculation under your terminal benefits. And also an insurance of an exit certificate. Uh, exit certificates could also be an acceptance of resignation or even 
uh, the letter of termination that you are issuing to the person. Now, the reason why you need to always give a certificate of um, uh, issue a certificate of exit, uh, two reasons. Um, for the person to um, get things like uh, a percentage of their pensions, if the person has not gotten employed with after six months of being laid off, and then for those who have resigned, right, uh, so that they can start getting their pension remitted to them uh, up to the point of death. That is why it's important you always issue an exit certificate. So that sums it up for the obligation of an employer. So for the employee, what are you expected to do? Serve your notice period. Um, contractually, employees and employers alike are expected to give notices before an exit, right? Uh, the notice period is to ensure the employer has in place a ready replacement and also prepare, prepare terminal benefits. Uh, in the event a notice period is given, another party is expected, a notice period is not given, sorry, either party is expected to pay the other in lieu of notice. However, many employees often resign without notifying employers and sending their notices once in the employ of another company or after relocating to another region. Now, that is poor practice, and I, I really hope no HR person, um, you know, uh, is involved in these types of things where they just disappear, disappear or ghost their employers and then from the comfort of their homes or wherever they are, they just say, I've resigned, right? Or type, uh, the, the joke I've been seeing on some of the groups, uh, how do you how do you resign from a company? And you just type OT law. So uh, I hope nobody does that. But then you sign a contract saying, I want to work with company XYZ. And there's always that one clause in that in that contract that says uh, termination of appointments. And it says um, either the employer or the employee may terminate the, the terms and conditions of this by giving two weeks before confirmation or one month after confirmation. Or There's a way we word it, right? It is ethical to always give a notice period. But where you feel you are pressed for time as an employee, then please be prepared to also give your employer the in lieu of notice. Because the employer too, if the reverse is the case, is terminating your appointment without due notice, they would pay you in lieu of termination. Right. Other categories of employees uh, are those who have mentally checked out of the company, either because they have gotten another job or don't feel fulfilled and waiting out their notices. And because of this reason, do not put effort into discharging their duties. We often have people where we have people that they dropped in their resignation. And from that moment on, they have this like a dicical attitude to work. Uh, they're not, they're no longer turning in their reports. Uh, tasks are left undone. They come into the office any at any time they want. They close. They take long extended breaks, right? Um, what many of us do not realize is this: those little infractions that we do as employees when we are exiting could be held against you. Now, while it is not best practice to use that against an employee. To use that to use it as a against an uh, an employee when uh, their new company you know calls for a reference, right? But what you do not realize is I could be very truthful to say um, while this person was with me was an excellent was an excellent employee. However, towards the end of their career with us, uh, I had to exhibit certain characters that I would not term as good employee now we don't want such you know reports tainting our records as employees right so it's best when you're serving out your notice period use that opportunity to clean up as much as possible that's even for me that's when i'll even give my 110 percent because 
I also want to make it easy for the person who is coming to take over from me. Let that person come and say, oh, so why did they employ me? The person that was here seems to have been doing a good job, right? They are leaving a legacy as an employee. Also, you submit all company properties in your possession, right? Uh, this includes ID cards, uh, company systems, employee handbooks, and any other items that contain the intellectual rights of the company. And finally, you have a handover note. Uh, HR people should, at this point, uh, mandate it to always have handover notes. Don't just take, don't just take the resignation of the employee and then just let the employee go, right? Equally, have let them have handover notes ready. Now, a detailed handover note would have things like the location of the documents. Now, um, these days, a lot of us are moving away from hard copy documents uh we have companies who sh who have shared google drives we have companies who have um, uh, sharepoint drives or backed up drives in a an oracle cloud right so wherever your working documents are you create you can create a link to say okay uh my payroll folders click this link uh my performance folders click this link you know location of the documents schedule of events so if you have some routine type rules. Oh, payroll is done uh, between the 28th and 25th. Have it at the calendar. You can, you can create calendars, right? And color code them so you know, oh, blue is payroll period. Um, red is um, periods for remittances. Uh, yellow in the month of D signifies this. Have a schedule of events so that the person who is coming on already knows at what point certain things need to be done. Now, contact persons or vendors, partners, and other stakeholders. Uh, so people who you work with regularly, uh, who contribute to the execution of your work, you should have like a Rolodex, a, 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 an itemized a page saying, oh, this person helps me with this. This is the person's email. This is the person's number. Um, this person helps me with this. Have all that in. In in, in 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 the document also work in progress uh you may have started some projects that ordinarily would take longer than usual or due to certain factors you're unable to complete them right it's best you you put in detail what those tasks are where you are in those tasks what the next steps would be and where if there are some of these things that need approval at whose table are those approvals spending? So all those should be contained in a handover. And then sharing that handover needs to be shared with the HR and uh, the line manager. Now, if some of those tasks, you have partners or st other stakeholders working with you, right? Also say uh, uh, to check on where this is, please check with XYZ person in so and so and so department. So all those should be in the handover notes. So other considerations um, under exits, replacements. Now, ordinarily as HR personnel, you should never wait for the exit of an employee before having a replacement. So you have things like your succession planning where actually your key man risk, you already have people that would readily take over that role if someone is exiting. Or you create a pipeline of candidates that will readily come and stay. Um, I worked in an organization where for every role, we had uh, two, four, five people, you know, um, in our HRIS platform that we usually call, we usually keep warm. Now, what do I call by keeping warm? After we've gone through the interview process, we send them a mail saying, um, However, we, this rule has been closed, but because they they were very they were excellent in the interview process, we want to keep them in view. We send them that mail. Maybe after three months, if we've not seen the need, oh hi, this is just to check up on you. Um, uh, we still haven't gotten an opening. What is just to check up on you and see how you are doing? Now those type of people, you are checking up on them regularly. The day. You message them say, oh, something has opened up in our company. Are you still interested? It will be easy for you to fill, the, fill up the role, right? So your turnaround time for recruitment will even be shortened. So 
where HR fails to have this in place, an abyss is created and work is hampered. That's where you have a critical role one month, six weeks, two months down the line, you've not filled it. Uh, work has not begun to suffer. Then yeah, temporarily, you now get a consultant to help you, you know, clean up that mess, which is extra uh, uh, financial burden on uh, the company. And then finally is to create an alumni. Uh, these days, I'm beginning to see um, companies creating alumni. And alumni don't always have to be with what school you go to and, and whatnot, but even in the workplace, create an alumni, an alumni group for past employees. Now, the thing is not all your all your editing employees that will want to join. The ones that are disgruntled will likely not join, but you see the ones that are not disgruntled, let them join your alumni group. They become ambassadors for your company, right? These are the people that the day they see a vacancy, they will be the first persons to contact you to say, oh, I have a younger brother, I have a colleague, I have a mentee, I have a mentor that can fill up this, fill up this role. So they become ambassadors for your company. They even help create a brand for your company. Because they be like, ah, that company when you leave, right? They have an alumni group. They even have alumni parties for them. They have alumni uh, engagements. So you should also have alumni engagements where past employees, you have like a forum with them to say, oh, these are the things we've done since you left. Not to gloat, but these are the things that um, we've done since you left. Because of that, we are creating new offices and we don't mind if some of you would come back, you know, uh, to keep building on the vision of uh, the company. So those are the things that alumni create, right? uh for organizations so that's a overview of you know exit management so at this point uh i'll take questions uh from people within the audience and um if you have anything you want to contribute also let me know thank you very much Hi, Oliemi. All right. Um, I'm seeing some questions here. Beatrice, All right. Okay. Okay. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the presentation, sir. Good evening. Thank you, sir. My Good evening, Beatrice. Thank you, sir. Now, my my first question is. Okay. My first question is um, talking about um, exit interview. Like people that leave involuntary, like those people that the company is sacked, do we need to conduct exit interview for them? Do you hear me, sir? Okay. Yes, we should do. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Like I said, exit interviews don't always have to be for those um, uh, who are leaving. It also has. It also can be triggered by those that you are letting. It's not just. You also need to get their perception, right? Oh, we are letting you go. However, um, could this have been avoided because? There were some things that we as a company did not provide to you. Okay. Right. Um, could it also be that we provided some of these things, but the utilization of were not properly explained during your onboarding? Now, even if you are terminating someone on the basics or on the basis of um, breach of policies, right? You can study the conversation away from the person's theft case and focus more on the other areas of the company, such as, uh, you know, your line manager working with other people, um, uh, ease of movement within the within the organization, is communication flowing across the organization. Uh, 
um, do your colleagues, do working with your colleagues, do you enjoy working with your colleagues? Were they being supportive? You know, so you could stay the question away from the reason why the person is being terminated to um, other things that has to do with the company itself. Okay. Thank you, sir. So my second question yeah. is, no um, talking about uh, terminal benefits, like where I am working, yeah. um, the plan we have on yeah. ground now is just for people that have worked for five years. It's a one-man business. Okay. It's for people that okay. have worked for, just for five years. So if you are not up to five years, you are not entitled to terminal benefits. Please, sir, I would like to ask, you know, we are the HR and okay. we, are, we are people's advocates. Now, is this right? Okay. Let me first ask this question back before I take your question, before I answer your question. Um, okay, the terminal benefits we are speaking of here. So yeah. if I if if I drop my resignation and I give a notice period. Mm. Will you still pay me at the end of that notice period? It does that happen not, in your company? If it's not up to one month, if the notice is not up to one month, you will not be paid your one month. So that is the current month. Now, if it's up to one month, you'll be paid just that one month. Okay. Yes. Um accrued leaves for the period are they added to the terminal benefits no sir it's not okay no so uh best practice now since you said we are hr people we need to we need to um do well as you know custodians because uh if we listen to one of the yesterday's um presentation right mm -hmm. uh when someone asked about strategic um H hrm right we are no longer just personnel management or personnel managers. We are now partners to the business, which means that whatever we say or do, right, is not only protecting the employees, but also protecting the business. The company. Exactly. So if you want every, every woman business, every, most companies start as woman business, then they grow into startups, then grow into conglomerates, right? If they want to become a conglomerate, they need to start putting in these types of policies. Okay. So you need to let you need to let your director, or I don't know how you call the overall <laughs> head of the company, right? To say, um, and it, some of these things may not exactly be full payments. Sometimes we don't say, oh. For every one month works uh, during exit period, might might pay fifty percent or pay hundred percent, but make the uh, the terminal benefit very juicy, right? So that it gives people that it gives people that sense of fulfillment that uh, their employment was not in vain. Okay, that's how the so, okay. thank you, sir. I'd like to advise you very much to ask, to ask their questions at once, please. Ask all your okay. questions at once. We are going to take um, Olakweju next. Then, while we are taking Olakweju, Naru, there are already some questions on the chat box. So, look at them so you can respond. Yes, I'm seeing the questions on the chat box. I wouldn't mind. Uh, okay, I'll go. I'll go through them. So let's take let's take Olakweju. Then I'll take the first two on the chat box. Then we'll go back to those raising their hands. Yeah. So Olakweju, Olakweju let's have you. Hello, hello, sir. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening Olakweju. Yes, sir. So um, my question is um, based on the exit interview. So in in a case where the organization had to dismiss an employee based on gross misconduct, do we do we still have to have an exit interview with that employee? And my second question is based on um, the the employer can can give to employees that were terminated that the organization terminated themselves. So if we have a situation whereby um, 
an organization wants to terminate an employee based on uh, performance and all, do we have a specific um, time frame, like years that the employee has to have spent with the organization for him or her to be considered for this kind of benefits? Thank you. Okay, uh, so for the first one, um, exit interview. So if you're having an exit interview for someone who was terminated, you sitting the person down to say, this is why we're terminating you, is also an interview. You're not just going to say, take, you're terminated, and then you walk back to your seat. Even if the person was caught with their hands in the cookie jar, you are not also just going to give them the letter and tell them to walk out the door. You sit them down to say, because as HR people, we should also do what you call um, personnel counseling, right? Where even when you catch people um, uh, committing certain infractions, you as an HR person should know how to steer the person back the right way. Even if you're letting that person go, you need to let that person know that, hey, I wish you all the best, right? However, wherever you are going, let this thing that has tainted your image, let it end here. In the new place you are going to, right, turn on a new leaf. So like I said, it's it's a one-on-one -on -one discussion. It's an appraisal of the situation. So you need to also have that interview with the person. Now to your second question um, about do people have to wait a certain period of year? No. The answer is no. Even if someone spends two months in the company, right? Whatever is due to that person up until the person's last day should be paid. I will give you instances where there's going to be um, some arguments, leave benefits. Some companies don't mind paying you your leave accruals from the day you join. Some will tell you until you are confirmed, that is when the leave accruals counts. In such cases, if person uses two months and it says for every month spent, yeah, you get uh, either 1.75 days or 0.75 days, you calculate what 0.75 days of that person's leave allowances and pay the person, right? So. Your terminal benefit doesn't necessarily have to be a, unless the person has spent a particular period within the organization. I hope that answers your question. Okay, thank you so much, Adirini. Let's quickly go through all the questions in the chat box. Then we come to the raise okay. hands. Okay, let me let me take. I'll take it. I'll take it. So, uh, I saw Omar says, in cases where an HR professor where as an HR professional, I do not get an opportunity to change some of the feedback I get from exit interview due to the nature of the business. Is there still anything to say? Yes. Um, let me tell you something now. Excess documentation goes a long way. Still conduct it. Document it. The day something happens, right, that could have been avoided, you can refer to your, your communication with your director to say, this issue had been raised before. These were my recommendations and you turn them down. However, we can still salvage it, which means if you see some of these things being done, already start planning towards how you can close them. For instance, if I'm, I'm looking for a very good example I could use. Um, you have a line manager, you have a line manager that is fond of using explicit, explicit, explicitives in the office. But that manager is also close to the director. And you've been sending mails to say this is all you need to do you see leadership training courses just be documenting them that you think the person can take so that when he gets to a hilt where the man the diagnosis okay at this point i need to step in say oh 
so you when we're saying these things uh you decline but however these are the things i have done uh, we can send him on these courses we will monitor his um performance uh where actually when it comes to dealing with his direct reports and where he doesn't change within a, spec a specified time we we'll let him go so always have that backup plan too so yes document the exit interview document your recommendation even if it gets turned down at some point it will get to where the director would ask for your opinion on that same matter. So that's it for a uh, For blessing, where is staff waits to receive <laughs> salary for any resignation letter? What do you do as HR? Uh, I know this is. I know that a million people on this call who have um, who have this issue. So this is this is what I'll say in this instance. A company I worked for, we called it, um, I'm trying to remember the name. But then when we calculate people's terminal benefits, there are some people that their terminal benefits are in the negative. So what we do to those people that their terminal benefits are in the negative. So because the company then used to be a company where we give out staff loans and whatnot. So if someone is still owing uh, a loan at the time the person is leaving, we'll calculate the terminal benefits, right? If the person has change and we calculate the person's loan, we can just deduct the loan from the person's terminal benefits. Even if it's two naira that is left, we'll pay the two naira. But where the person's terminal benefit is not enough to clear out the loan, whatever that negative figure is, we will send the person a mail to their private email to say, we have calculated your terminal benefits, you are owing us. Please give us a date, right, or time that you'll be making these payments. And then close it out. You can, right, chase for that money. Why? The person submitted guarantors form contact the guarantors to say, oh, um, XYZ person left our employees and is owing us XYZ. Please kindly contact them to make payments to and drop the company's accounts. That is why terminal benefits are important. To, that's why you have to calculate terminal benefits when a person is, a, a person is leaving. Because you might end up saving, you as the HR person will end up saving the company some money. If you can recover some of these things, but more often than not, you people, a lot of us just feel, uh, how much is the person? Where the person be going? Yes, we could do that. Yes, we could do that. But where the cost outweighs the benefit of the person living, what do you do? Right. So yes, please calculate the person's terminal benefit, even if the person leaves. If the person has leave a money that the person has not has not leave that the person has not gone for and you pay leave allowances you can calculate the leave allowance could even be more than that salary the person's salary and then you net it off and pay the person the balance so that's it um someone asks the open-ended or closed-ended you can ask directly uh what do you do when the staff japa without doing clearance and you need them to clear same principle uh, same principle appears uh that is why you don't have only the person's company email that is why in your staff registry also have the person's um personal email and it's always good that whenever you are whenever someone resigns and you are sending communication to the person you can blind copy or copy the person's private email addresses so that even if it gets lost in the person's um, um personal um no company email your person will have something to refer to in their personal emails document it send it at some point always remember this the person will get to an organization where they would need to refer to the previous organization they are coming from okay so when you the, want proper just the need let's just take some people whose hands are up so that their hands won't be pinning them um, let's quickly take. Okay, uh, let me quickly take 
this person had the two ended question. Let me take the second part of it and then we'll move to the people uh, okay. with their hands up. We are sorry for keeping your hands up. When you want poor performance uh, staff to leave the system after warnings, what's the best approach so one doesn't pay in lieu? Hmm. The thing is, whichever way you look at it, time is also money. If you don't want to pay the person in lieu, it means that you are going to have to let that, just give the person a, ter a termination letter saying, but your termination will take effect on a later date. But what you end up doing, what you end up doing is, you're still going to pay that person for working that one month. So you might as well just pay the person the in lieu and let the person go. Plus, the moment you even give the person that letter that we are terminating you on the later date, the person mentally checks out, right? So the person is just coming to work to mark register and wasting your time. And now remember, time is money. And the thing is, you can't actually put uh, finan a financial uh, uh, figure to time being wasted. So it's best to just pay the you and let the person go. So let's take um, some of the people with their hands raised. Uh, I don't know if there's a sequence in how their hands were raised, but from my screen yes, here, Taiwo. Tai is it the footballer? Tai Tai Wu. Good evening. Okay, okay, now, okay, okay, Kristen. Uh, okay, now please let I call Tai Tai Wu first. So I don't. I hope you don't mind uh, if I go with Tai Tai Wu first, and then I'll come back to you. Okay, now. So Tai Tai, over to you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Adele. Thank you for these sessions. Um, though some of the questions I had in mind are already been cleared of doing the, the, the last explanation. But I want to ask, okay. um, at what point will you take um, all this jackpot of a team without proper resignation with work abandonment? You know, some people just hide under this um, work abandonment. If you don't see me for three days, take it as what uh, work abandonment and what are the legal implications to this for employees? Then the other side of it is, um, you, in, in your highlight, you made mention of um, downsizing, redundancy. I've seen a couple of organizations that use this to just lay off a, 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 an employee. I've seen the case when somebody trying to, uh, a, a professional colleague con, um, contacting me saying, uh, the MD asks her to, to terminate someone's contract. So my question was, on what basis? He said, no, I, I don't just like the person's face. I want the person to go. I'm like, no, this is unprofessional. There are legal issues to this. So in this case like this, what are the procedure before an employee can say, okay, I want to do a redundance? So those are the two questions for employer okay. and employee. Because okay. So uh, first, the first question, um, can you read your first question again? Because I was focusing on the second question. Just, just go on with what you had. Um, that's why I said they should keep the questions direct and type it because of time, please. Go okay. on with the question. Okay, so let me just answer the second. So let me just answer the second. Okay, yeah, the jackpot thing, right? So for the jackpot thing, right, uh, you really can't hold people these days, especially with the migrations. Uh, but then, as an employee, as an HR person, if you operate an open door policy where employees are comfortable enough to approach you a lot of us have become a lot of hr people have become gods and goddesses in their respective places of work they can't approach them oh i can't, I can't go to hr hr is going to mm -mm. but then when you make yourself approachable and you tell this person, hey, uh, the conversation you are having, well, as a nature person, one of the things that you should upload is confidentiality. Talk to me, what is the issue? You would be in the best position to advise them on what to do. But where the person does leaves, like I said, document it. Send a mail to the person's um, um, private email. Oh, we heard you relocated. Uh, we have computed your um, your final your terminal benefits, and it has come to this negative or positive. Also, due to the fact that we are treating your case as an abandonment of duty, we are not 
uh, obligated to provide you with an acceptance of resignation or whatever you want to call it. Case closed. Most times they will see that mail, they will call you and tell you they want to do the right thing. Right? That's the first one. Um, for your sec for your second question, which was centered around, uh, can you just remind me? So I are there any? Are there any? Yes. Yes. Don't need to watch. Remember, you will type it in the chat box. Time. Okay. Is... Just type it in the chat box. Okay. And for okay. those asking questions, let's be direct and short. I prefer typed questions. Let's take. Okay, now one question preferably, please. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay, now please over to you. Well, we Hi, are okay. waiting for, okay, now let's quickly go to Olakweju. Olakweju, I think Olakweju had asked before. Um, our audio is connected. If your questions has been asked, don't bother again, okay? No. Okay. Well, um, good evening, sir. Sorry, it was when you were answering one of the questions that I remember something I wanted to ask. So in a situation okay. whereby we have an employee that joined the organization and the person is still within the probation period, so at the end of the probation period, the the head of the particular department where the person is said um, wrote a, a mail to HR saying that he's not getting joy from this particular employee and he would want us to disengage the person. How do we address that? Because I personally felt that okay, maybe maybe we should have um, um, put this person under observation, check if there are gaps in trainings and all that we could feel, but it just came like disengage this person because the person is not delivering within, before the end of the probation period. And we had to do it when the probation period ended. Okay. Um, I know there was a call, it was a class here on uh, performance management. Now let me tell you the thing about probation. Your probation period is a two way thing. The employer is checking if this person would fit into the company. The employee too is also looking if this person would, if the company is the right fit for them. Now, a line manager actually can, within the end, before the end of the probation period, say, this person is not performing and you can let the person go is still within the probation period. That's why it's called a probation period. It's not, it's the period of trial and error. And if it doesn't work out, let's part, uh, let's part ways. So yes, uh, line managers are still within the rights to say, um, this person doesn't fit into the plans of the department. And I believe we should cause our losses and let the person go. Because Except the person say, except the line manager says, mm, I don't think I think this person is struggling because it's still in the early days. You can now decide to extend the person's probation, right? Put them on PIPs and all that type um, stuff, right? Until the person shapes up. Hope that answers your question. Okay, so let's go to okay now. Okay now. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Um, a quick one. I'm still on termination um, contract uh, in terms of, um, where an employee is meant to be terminated based on gross misconduct. Is this same employee entitled to now benefit? So, oh, so for gross misconduct, for gross misconduct, right? Employees uh, are usually not entitled to benefits especially cases of thefts uh, or cases that you can move from being a, uh, if the company wants to sue it will be under um, so in, in thought it's not going to be a civil suit anymore but a criminal suit so the moment uh, employees commit such infractions they lose the right to any terminal benefits so theft is one of them. Uh, once you commit theft in the organization, you lose terminal benefits. Uh, physical harm to a colleague 
or someone else in the business place, you lose all terminal benefits. Okay, uh, thank you so much. Um, all right. Really, let me just add here what I've done practically to be yeah. So, if, for example, we are dismissing you by the 18th of the month for for text. We'll make sure that there is documentation, and then, for example, we can do a net off. So, most likely, you are actually entitled to, in this context to a terminal benefit. It's just that it is negative, and you are owing it. And then I will pursue you for the exactly. copy of your standing. So I don't want to make it look exactly. like that. But let's assume that it's a gross misconduct. You didn't take my money or anything. I will advise that I will pay you up until your last working day. I've done it. It's neater. Because sometimes you cannot determine the outcome of a court case. And you can lose the court case. And they'll tell you to not pay everything and pay arrears and pay with interest. So we also exactly. need to be careful about that. Only three exactly. more hands, and we won't take any more hands outside these three. Then we'll focus strictly on the um, our colleagues who have, uh, you know, typed their questions. Deborah, please. We take okay, Deborah. So after okay, Deborah, I remember, I remember the. I remember the. Uh, before I take uh, Deborah, I remember the question the guy I was trying to remember where he said. Um, what if there's no change in technology and it rendered someone redundant? That person uh, could actually sue because when you're terminating such an employee, right, or you're terminating anybody, as long as it's not employment at will, where uh, that is stated in the contract that is employment at will, you are expected as a company, right, to state the reasons for the termination. Unless it is stated in the letter that is an employment at will, you don't need to give a reason for termination. All right, so um, I'll take Deborah Dombiri. Okay, um, good evening. Um, um, good thanks evening. for this presentation. So my question is straight. I wanted to know, what do you do when employees do not want to undergo exit interviews how do you pacify them because of my kind of business they are not physically present on site so they are like in other states so i call them so i've done two three calls like that several occasions call back i'm not available you say okay call me again later i called again switched off not reachable called again they are, they don't, they are not willing i could see that they don't want to respond to any interview from me i don't know what to do so i don't know how do we go about okay. it? Okay, Deborah, two things will occur here. If you've not released the person's final paycheck, you can hold on to it until the person comes. One. Two, um, just document that on three different occasions, uh, you've tried to initiate an exit interview with this person, uh, but then the exit interview never held for reasons best known to the employee end it you don't need to make it you don't need to make uh, or give yourself uh, a lot of headache over uh, you know uh, the mindset of that person the person might be a disgruntled employee who feels i just need to close the door on this company right so you can't force them into wanting to have that discussion but the thing you can do from your own end right is just document that you've made the approach you approach the person you sent a mail you sent a zoom link you sent a google link for you to the person never just showed up just document it and close it out thank you uh so i think i'll take for larry next okay um good evening sirs thank you so yes, much for please. the um, interview so far um i said interview for the training so far all right so um, <laughs> just <a quick> word. <laughs> so just a quick one um i i have um, a scenario that i'm i experienced and i don't know the way forward so practically a staff um give an exit um gave give a one month notice and after that one month notice there was no um interview um form that was um, i said interview again lord help um, there was no exit form that was sent to the um, staff to fill. Even after the staff had left the 
system. Uh, one month down the line, the staff was not paid every benefit that was supposed to be given to um, him. And then the staff went to trigger um, a mail to the HR, um, copied everyone. The HR department then realized that, um, okay, this staff has not been given um, the exit interview form to fill, even though, you know, there's a system that usually is in, put in place on, on system where you fill an exit form online. But the physical one was not given to the um so the staff to fail after two months the staff sued um the company as an hr what is the next effort okay legally the the company okay. was sued. So, the thing is, so the thing is legally the person is within their rights to sue you um it also now depends on the relationship you as the hr person has with uh that existing employee which is why i always say hr should always be approachable because i can tell you before this person even planned on suing the person has reached out to someone within the organization to try and have a conversation and probably the person was ignored uh my advice here would be to reach out to this employee to have a discussion right uh see how you can have them drop the um court case against your company and you know come to mutual agreements however what i have noticed in your question is there was a uh someone dropped the ball technically right uh procedures and processes were not followed which is why you have a, an exit checklist if it's possible now, for those of you who use HRI assistance, your exit, your offboarding should be stuff that comes with email triggers, so that the moment someone sends in, someone sends in their resignation, whoever is in charge of your employee, your employee database, puts in the exit um, notification in the HRI system. Automatically, you see a, a, a checklist that will drop saying send mail to it to deactivate mail by so so and so day send mail to the comp and burn person to prepare the person's terminal benefit by so so and so day so that as each of these things are done you are ticking it people will get email notifications for them to do their tasks complete their tasks so that you can also close out and if it's manual on my on my system i have sticky notes someone drops something for me i just write it this person is leaving us so and so and so date these are the things i need to do i stick it on my laptop so as i'm waking up in the morning I'm, my sticky notes is telling me the release are the things you need to do because this person is exiting i hope that answers your question so let's quickly check the chat box again then we'll come to all right the yeah. Okay. So I'd answer this person. So I'm going to Karish O. Okay, Karish O answered the Sohe's question. Thank you very much, Karish O, for that. Uh Bingpe Aremu. What do you do when an employee requests for five days leave and without a proper approval goes on the said leave upon the supposed resumption? He says there's a no mail without dropping the office properties. Hmm. Okay. Um, as with every other thing that was as with every other thing that was advised, right? Um you could also factor this into the person's terminal benefit. If a person is entitled, if the person is entitled to the, to leave allowances, so the person now has now gone on the leave, you can you just net that off from the person's. Uh, terminal benefits, right? Uh, some companies have a policy of they can take their remaining leaves along with their resignation as terminal leave. Uh, but I know most companies frown against it because, hey, they still need the person to do a few things. You can treat it as, um, as an unpaid leave, right? You can treat it as an unpaid leave, meaning the person is not supposed to go on leave, the person has gone on leave. You don't pay for it so it's how you would treat absenteeism the person doesn't get paid for the days not worked right 
factor that into the person's um, terminal into the person's terminal payments. And where you will now, since the person still has their property, your, your office property in the possession, just hold on to their checks, which is why it's advisable terminal benefits are paid with checks so that the person can sign off on it. Right? And also, you should also have terminal benefits. If the person is asking, uh, please, what are the things that make up my final payment? Always have that documentation. Oh, these are the things that make up your final payment. Let the person sign for it that, okay, I accept to collect this. And then the person can go. So if the person has your company possession, uh, their, your company um, um, items in their hand, hold on to their final check. Once they come, once they come with the, all the things that they are owing you, then you can give them their final check and they move. So I'm moving on to the next question, which is from Oinola Money. Sorry, I can't pronounce your first name. That's why I skipped it. Uh, when someone resigns and requests to come back within one month of no period. Uh, so the person has resigned as the best uh that one is tricky because as the person resigned and left or while the person while the person has resigned the person is now withdrawing um is now withdrawing uh their resignation so that i'm not i'm not sure of that but then as long as the person shows that they are working for that full period pay them their full salary pay them their full salary uh francis can an employer sack a whole department for a fraud committed by only one member of the department? Hmm. It's possible. It's possible. And that's if one or more people are in cahoots with the main person that committed that crime. If one or more persons are in cahoots, it's possible. If also that is a department that... Um, a high level of trust is expected from them. It's also possible. But then, if they do that, it means uh, a lot of work is going to suffer. So I'm assuming it's more going to be a graduating exit. So maybe two people will go today, they replace like that, like that, until everybody is gone. Can the staff be disengaged without a reason or course properly communicated to the affected staff? The answer is no, which is why I said, except in the contract of offer you see employment at will so you can't terminate anybody without just cause what actions possibly can the staff take against the company the staff can definitely sue the staff can definitely sue how do edit interviews how do edit interviews be conducted in these cases and what should the benefits look like i'm not sure i understand that question maybe you might want to rephrase it uh, moving on, will it be nice to put the period that terminal benefit to be paid in the exit interview form? Yes, yes, yes. So, if you are doing your exit interview, say it, your final benefit will be paid on or before, but then in any good working company, if you are the one that is going to terminate that person, it's best that you start doing your groundwork and your calculation of terminal benefits before that person's last day. So that they are walking the person out of the door, the person is leaving with their check. For the one that is triggered by the employee, you already have the person's notice period to work that in. But where your company is the type that maybe you guys use uh, like a bento, for instance, and you, don't, and you want to ensure that you pay that person within the bento system, right you could always put it there that oh your salary will be paid on or, or your terminal benefits will be paid on or before the bits usually pay every other person that as if the person is living before uh so i think there are two answers let's just close the two ones and then we'll on any comments so that in the chat.
person who's out. Okay, on this day, yeah, I'm expecting uh, uh, my terminal. Hello, Mr. Muraki. Now, benefits. Then my ne next Hello. question. Good, good evening. Um, good evening, um, Mr. Dostu and Hello, Mr. Amuso. Please, can you okay. hear me? After the two hands, yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Good I'm evening, right Mr. Dostu. Yes. Oh, yeah. Good you evening. You. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, good evening, Mr. Doshu, and good evening, Mr. Amosu. Thank you for this um, platform, and this topic is timely. Someone has already exhausted my question. However, um, what if the final pay for this staff that has refused to return company property is not commensurate to the gadget that he has? How can that be handled? And then I have a, a current staff that is meant to um, resign on, on 28th of February. That is his last day. He gave his due notice. However, he has been so redundant. But what he has tried to do is any task that is required of me, he does it before I even ask. But the task that, that I don't oversee, that is the one in the product department, there are many things that he has left undone and that has cost the company, you know, funds and some other things is it ambitious to have the salary prorated how do i handle this please and then when he if you send um for a resignation and then sorry you you apply for leave your entire one month leave and then once the leave is approved you send your one month in you notice for resignation is that okay if not if not how is it handled thank you Okay, I'll say I'll take it from the back upwards. Okay. Uh, um, like I said, some um, some companies don't mind if people use their leaves as some as um as um like a like a to you know just resign and say you know what let this person in let this person go. Most times is employees that are troublesome. Companies will say you know what let him use. Let him use his leave as semi as a as a terminal leave. Let him go from there, right? Uh, but some companies they will insist that no, you can't take um, your leave um, during your resignation period, during your notice period. Uh, but then we are humans. We need to put human feelings because sometimes when people give notice periods, if they are going to go and join another organization, right? More often than not, they, they are they are they are ending their um, their job with you today to resume tomorrow no time for them to rest if person is insisting you could just say okay uh we can give you the fine the last week off right to uh use for your leave and then but just have that conversation to say however uh we will deduct x days as not days for working and we'll use the rest as um, leave allowance that will add uh, to your terminal benefits. That's one. For the question before that, where he said, if the person, the things in the person's possession uh, is more expensive than the person's terminal benefits, uh, goes back to contact the person, contact the person to return the, to return the uh, items in their possession. And where they do not, then write, write to the um write to the person's guarantor or the person's refuge to say um this person has existed for our system however uh they are still in possession of our laptop company id cards well kindly reach out to them uh to please return uh, where we do not receive a response in 30 days uh we will have to use any means of recovery to recover our company items simple Okay, I think we should quickly take Mr. Murakio. Wow. Yes. Hello, sir. Hi, Murakio. Hello, sir. Hello, I'm trying to unmute. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, you can hear you, sir. Wait, wait on, I only want to add that um, 
good. Especially for small and medium sized organizations, because a lot of issues occur in them mostly. The processes and procedures should not only be documented but communicated. So that it's not be your yeah. bad thing. When somebody's at the point of exit that you're now calling, you don't need to call, except you want to find a midway round. And if it's communicated, they knew what's supposed to have been done. So if I don't know, you know, it become a legal thing. That is what also the court will be relying on. That what does your policy, what does your so-so say? And that's why even after I have been communicated, you look at the what individual companies that they sign for such a HR policy, they are aware. So when you are going to call your lawyer, also say that this yeah. is to show that I didn't really sign and understand and uh, understood all the content they are in. You know, they surely have in the copy or whatever. So whether it is all um, online information, whether it's hard copy, the, the staff assistant will not claim not to be aware. So the court also can see from the fact that it's a deliberate ploy by the person not to follow the rules. That is one. Mm -hmm. And that has affected almost all the issues that they are being they are raising. Because if all the information is there, it doesn't stop people from still deciding not to follow. But at least the company will have covered it back to a great extent that this has been completed, the staff is aware, and you have evidence to show for that. Then mm -hmm. on the other side, concerning uh, people living and all whatever, you know, the issue again is that there is this issue concerning law, whether the law permits or compels the employer to do um, reference or not. If we are waiting that the person is coming for reference, what if it doesn't come for reference? And the property of the company is with the person. Just like you have mm -hmm. said, you will hardly be able to, uh, to, to do anything on it um, in law. But on moral situation, if the person hears that you call for the company, the person will be compared to court and compare that person to respond. That's one thing that will work. I just said, want to mention that the aspect of ensuring that their documentation and computer to staff and the evidence that they are aware of the rules will help a great deal if it gets to the worst situation that they have to prosecute to resolve the issue. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Marakio. That was, that was actually very helpful. Uh, so yes, just like Mr. Marakio said, right? It's not just documenting, but documenting and communicating. Uh, so Mr. Marakio, just to highlight that, when I said documenting, right? Which was why I stated that when communicating with the employee, also put the person's personal email address into it so that if the, the case gets to court and the courts ask for uh, the employer's uh, uh, evidence to show that it was communicated, you have it in black and white. It was written, it was communicated via mail. Uh, maybe calls may be lost because other calls will, climb, will get on top of it, but then, uh, or even things like maybe setting meeting invites. You can always call back for meeting invites that were sent. Right. So thank you very much, Mr. Murakinho, for uh, your contribution. All right. So I'll read the last uh, three messages and then we'll probably call it a day. Will it be nice to put it? Okay, I think about that. Are sales employees terminated as a result of poor performance entitled to terminal benefit? Uh, yes. So they may not make um, the sales bonus uh, for that period, but at least for the days worked, Right, or if I they have accrued leaves, yes, paid them for it. Um, all I did, all I did, son says, how do you treat the disengagement of a staff if the staff is distracted and you have discovered that this staff is distracted because he's in another remote employment? Man, the moment you notice that someone is distracted, you can call the person to say, hey, do you want to reduce your notice period and then end it on a mutual? Uh, agreement so that a person can focus on uh, their new employment, right? Uh, for that, you can um, you can have conversations with them to say that because they are the, because they are distracted, right? Uh, you want to let them go uh, without having to you know pay any notice in lieu, but you could do the thing and say you know what for the many days right you can leave we'll pay you your notice just go right so this is is more of a having a conversation around it right if you want to pay if you want to pay the money pay the money let the person go if you want to pay the money have a conversation with the person to say oh yeah of which once someone signs a full-time um a full-time contract with you the person is expected 
to give you their hundred percent concentration. The moment the person is working for another person while in your employees, you can actually terminate that person. And that one you can actually terminate, terminate without giving the person their terminal benefits. Once you can provide justification or you can provide an evidence that the person is working for you and working for another company, you can terminate. You can terminate. Do you pay an employee his last pay when he did not do handover and also did a factory set on still give it to you? Wow. Oh, okay. Um, that's that's very tricky, boy. If you can hold the person's salary till the last day and you find out about these things, right? You can decide not to pay. You, you may de you can decide you can decide not to pay the person, right? Because the person, uh, the person has put your business in a fix, right? No handover is leaving an open-ended. Uh, employee so nobody knows what the person has been doing what the person has done nobody knows how the person is going to continue right it just means that someone is going to have to start all over again uh the person the person resets the system so it means that you can't even access documents right uh so that's very tricky which is why as hr personnel you should start move, you know advising your companies to move into cloud cloud based you know uh, storage so uh start dissuading employees from saving documents on their personal system and saving documents on you know the company's cloud storage system so the cheapest one that i know of is uh, your google drive you can get the company the google drive of about uh five terabytes and you're probably paying what less than a thousand dollars uh, for two years, right? Uh, the more expensive ones are the Oracle drives, uh, the Microsoft drives. Those are those ones that are a lot more expensive. But then, when you have a central company drive, you create sub subfolders for your department and ensure that everyone's work is saved in those drives. It saves a lot of headache of an existing employee deleting documents or deleting things on the system. Anything that wants to be on the system should be the person's personal stuff and not anything that has to do with the company. Um, said Ndoyo says, how do you deal with the staff who tender resignation but never stay to the end? Hence, did no clearance. It discovered the only took up employment elsewhere. This has been answered, but I'll just answer it one more time. Um, no, closing remarks, really. No, closing remarks, please. Oh, my closing remarks. Uh, okay, you, so, would you like to be uh, no, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll say this, I'll say that, no, 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 no. all right, so, um, basically just follow the due, same due process that I've explained earlier on, uh, communicate to the person, uh, errors and we to fix it up, right, so that's it for me on the exit management and the things you need to know, um, for those who joined late, uh, only will be uploading this on the HR mentorship um youtube page so we can always go back to it uh to um you know listen to the questions again go over the slides again the slides also will be shared i assume yes if they want they, they have we have a the hr mentorship has a central working document right okay yeah Oliemi has dropped on the chat box so search for Oliemi Adio show on youtube and you have access to um this learning series um the document this the document for this program will also be shared um there's a drive that um, the hr mentorship group has created uh those drives have every um document that has been shared on all the hr mentorship groups it also includes slides from every series so we can also access this um i will have said i'll drop my email address but then i get so very busy these days but um, my phone numbers are on all the groups. Uh, my name is Laru on all the HR mentorship groups. Uh, if you're in a fix, uh, you could call me. I'm usually free in the evenings between um, 6.30 and 7.30. Uh, 
Uh, I'll be glad to take anybody's calls for anything that has to do with, you know, uh, either this or any other thing in HR that I have strengths in. Uh, if it's something that you want us to also debate about, uh, that one hour is open to HR mentorship uh, participants. So uh, on that note, I want to say thank you to everyone for joining. I want to say a huge thank you to Oluyemi for, you know, Oluyemi actually held my neck and said, really, in February, you must have one learning series. And I'm glad I actually um, listened to him and I took this series. Oluyemi has always been a mentor to me since the very first day I met him. And I want to say a very huge thank you to him for um, allowing me, you know, have this session with each and every one of us. Uh, I'm not always this serious, like I tell people, or like Oluyemi also knows. <laughs> I'm not always this serious, but uh, yeah. And when we're having our next hangouts, please come out. Let's also have, you know, discussions on HR. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Adirili Amosu, for that excellent presentation. I'll wrap up by saying this. You know, today, when people are trying to fall in love or go into marriage, you see them proposing publicly. At least you see them divorcing publicly, at least not as elaborate. However, I like to say in HR, the same finesse with which we do on body is the same finesse we should do off body. The same level of professionalism that we approach new employees with, let us also endeavor to end on a positive note. No matter what the situation is, even if somebody has committed fraud, you can still let people maintain their dignity. Never forget that an expert can become the minister of labor tomorrow or the central bank governor tomorrow or be the biggest investor or the biggest customer tomorrow. So please don't look at people today. Maybe they are in a low estate, they are a cleaner. It doesn't matter their status. Please, dignity in how you exit people, whether you are terminating them or whether they are voluntarily exiting. Please, stay professional. Behave like you will always need their help. Be courteous, be polite, and be supportive. I really said it. Whether you like it or not, you always have an alumni network. Maybe you are now sharp enough to cultivate it intentionally. Also, when people have gone, they may reach out maybe for reference or for a letter of support or documentation, please, as much as possible, be professional and treat people well. When you do the right thing every time, you will not be afraid of shadows. Neither would you have skeleton in your cupboard. I'd like to say thank you once again, Adela Mosu. I'd like to say thank you to the about 80 people who joined this session today. i also like to say thank you to very senior people just to mention a few people like Adiola Adekewa, who is the head of HR at uh, uh, Kano Electricity. We don't take it um, for, for, for granted. Kano Electricity, I beg your pardon, we don't take it for granted. People like Mr. Morak Nyondoyede, who is retired from, from First Bank, very senior professional and is also a consultant. Mrs. Adekewa is also a member of the Governing Council, Charity of Personal Management of Nigeria. And she consistently keeps coming back. Thank you for your humility. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate you. Good night. Stay safe. No matter who you think as president, Nigeria will be better for it. Mark my words. Thank you and bye for now. Amen. Thank you very much.